Uber and Lyft passengers are paying a premium for most rides right now because surge is happening in a lot of places due to this driver shortage. And drivers out there are making a little bit more money because of the attached surge. But there's a huge discrepancy between what drivers are making and what passengers are paying. Why is Uber and Lyft taking so much money? Hey everyone, my name is Chris and this is Real Rideshare Stories. And today we're going to be talking about where's all the surge going? All this extra money that customers are paying when it comes to ordering Uber or Lyft, where is it going? Because it's not actually going to the drivers. And I have a couple of screenshots that I found scrolling through Facebook on what riders are paying, what drivers are making, what's going on? Oh, and this is another reason why drivers are walking away from Uber and Lyft. All right, so let's take a look at what is going on on Lyft's side. Now, this was taken from a Facebook post, and the driver said originally on the post, this was when I realized how much things had changed. I messaged Lyft about the surge price, and they said, we don't calculate surges. You get your mile and time calculations, and that's it. The guy said he paid $40 in surge prices for a ride that's usually $50, meaning the total cost of the ride was $90. New drivers don't understand surge prices used to benefit the driver. And that is 100% true right there. It used to benefit the driver. Not really so much right now. And here's the accompanying screenshots of what he had. So he took a screenshot of what the passenger had paid and it's showing the pickup and drop off locations. And you can see that the lift fare for 36.76 miles, which took 43, almost 44 minutes, was $92.95 when normally it takes, he said, $50 and left a nice tip. So good job to that passenger at $18.59, which the total cost was $111.54. So now we saw what the rider paid. Let's see what the driver actually made. And as you see on the screen right now, it says that for the earnings, got the base rate of 30 cents, woo, and then $5.60 in time and $22.32 for the distance. And that's not including the tip. So the driver in total made $46.81, but you take out that $18.59 and the driver actually only made $28.22. You can figure that out if you want to subtract the tip, but that's exactly what it is. So for a $90 ride, which was actually $92.95 in total, the driver really only made $28.22 and Lyft pocketed the rest. All right, and now let's take a look at two screenshots again that I found on a Facebook post, which is showing what the driver made and what the rider paid. Now, I don't have all of the information except for just part of the screenshot, but it still shows you the huge discrepancy between what Uber and Lyft is making versus what the driver is making when it comes to these surge prices. So the screenshot on the left, you see that the customer paid $62.52 for a ride that earned the driver $14.19. And their surge was a flat rate of $2.25. And it was a short trip because it shows on the time there, 9.3 minutes. Now the screenshot on the right is really crazy and insane to see because the customer you see paid $315.90, but the driver made $59.70. Now, again, I don't know what the fare breakdowns on that is, but that is a huge discrepancy between what the driver was paid and what Uber pocketed when it comes to surge. Now, I don't know about you, but drivers and riders should be absolutely furious at Uber and Lyft for this type of practice. Back in the day, it was great because, well, if there was a low supply of drivers and there was surge, well, that driver would make the majority of that surge. So it was all right. But today, Uber and Lyft are pocketing most of that money. Drivers are not. And riders think that drivers are actually making that fair. No, that's not how it works. You can see it right here on those couple of screenshots. So yeah, drivers and riders should be absolutely furious at these companies 
for changing it so much and pocketing most of your money when they're not really doing anything except for connecting a rider and a driver. So just to let you know how things used to work, it was called a multiplier. So both Lyft and Uber was done by a multiplier. It would look a little bit different. Uber would do 1.4x, 1.8x, 2.3x. Lyft would do 100% more, 200% more, 250% more, whatever it was. It still worked out to be a multiplier. It didn't matter. So a quick example of this, if a driver would make $10 on a particular ride normally, under normal conditions, they would make $10. But if they were going to get surge pricing, let's say at 1.8x, they would make $18 on that $10 ride. On the same $10 ride under, let's say, a 3.5x, that driver would make $35. Now, they decided to switch it to this flat rate multiplier, and so it would be $1.50 extra, $2.25 extra, $6 extra, $12 extra, and it didn't matter the length of the ride. Now, if it was a short ride, it would actually benefit, but the length would also be recalculated. So if it was a longer ride, that same $6 surge, flat rate surge, might actually be more. It just depended on the length of the trip. But when it comes to what the passenger pays, they're still continuing to collect a multiplier surge on the customer end. So now let's go back to that $10 ride. The difference is this is what the customer pays. So if you ordered a ride and it's $10 and you're paying $10 in normal conditions, but then today there's a surge attached to it and let's say that's three and a half times. So that $10 ride now becomes $35. Well, that $10 ride for the driver's side, they might be getting $1.50 extra. So now you can actually see where the multiplier and the flat rate are actually getting out of sync with each other and Uber and Lyft collect the difference, which means you guessed it, more money is going in their pockets and not to the driver's pocket. And yet more money is coming out from Uber and Lyft passengers. Now I get it. Drivers love surge. Riders hate it because that means they're paying more for the same ride. Drivers love it because they're actually making more money and they're able to make a good chunk of change if they do it correctly. So yeah, there's a discrepancy there. But the big problem is these companies shouldn't be pocketing that extra money. They should actually be paying the money to the drivers because, well, it's supply and demand. You're just connecting a rider and a driver. That's it. Now, I don't really expect anything to be done in particular when it comes to these companies changing their policies. I get that. But it's more about being aware of what's going on and riders out there know that drivers aren't really actually making the entirety fair. They're making a small portion of the fare and Ubers and Lyft's claims to whatever you're paying is getting more and more and more, while well, the driver's still getting paid the same or less than what they used to get paid. So now I wanna hear from you. Are you a customer? Are you a driver? What are you seeing when it comes to the discrepancy of what you're making or what you're paying under these surge circumstances? And most riders are paying a premium right now when it comes to rides because there is this driver shortage. So comment below with your thoughts, with what you're seeing and what you're actually experiencing. All right, that's the end of the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications so you'll be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And as always, never drink and drive. Always tip your drivers, your delivery drivers and your shoppers. We'll see you next time.